Hey guys, Media Rebel Chris Tomer here on this Monday. I want to start off with uh, the photo I posted to X. Got a lot of uh, engagement. Uh, I'm not surprised. It was a busy opening day at Arapaho Basin in Colorado. I mean, you can see the lift line. Pretty unbelievable. I mean, everybody's skiing basically this one run. And look at the line. It actually starts going up the hill. Um, so that was yesterday. It was Keystone and a basin open all right let me show you what's going on right now I'll take you up to alta they picked up about an inch of snow um some additional snow is developing or redeveloping right now so not quite done yet um but so far that's what we're seeing up there jackson hole some pretty good snow up higher there's your view from rendezvous and uh, over towards the cody bowl area um there was a little bit of snow down lower at the base area more like a dusting um, so I'll show you radar there as well, but there's your Pacific Northwest radar. You can kind of see everything across the West. So your flow, the front is kind of like right in here and the whole thing will be sinking or tracking down to the South through the course of the day towards Colorado, uh, towards the central and Northern mountains of Colorado. And then eventually it will sweep across Denver, but you can see the precip behind it. In, uh, in parts of Wyoming, in Idaho, Montana, and northern Utah. So let's let's take a trip in there. Here's Utah. Notice a little bit of redevelopment happening right there with that flow running into the, the Wasatch Front. Um, so some additional accumulation likely with that, and that will probably run across the, uh, the high Uintas uh, as well. Let's go into Wyoming. Um, you know, there's not a ton of precip here, but you've got snow down over the Laramie Range, a little bit of leftover snow over the Tetons, the Wind Rivers, there's your snow in Utah. Now, again, what I was saying, this is kind of the, the frontal boundary right here, and throughout the course of the day, it's going to sink down to the south. It's got a lot of wind, it's got colder air behind it, and so it will run down over the mountains of Colorado and across Denver and the front range as well. All right, let me show you my bullet points here this morning. Here's what I'm seeing. So we've got that storm system crossing the interior Rockies, gusty wind and colder air. Looking at the Pacific Northwest and BC, there are two additional surges of atmospheric river moisture uh, coming, 11-1, 11-2, and then 11-4, and 6. The best odds for snow, Colorado, Tahoe, Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, Montana, and interior BC are right there. Clearly the best chances of heavier precip, of heavier snow, are up into the Pacific Northwest and across British Columbia. Less or fewer chances as you work your way down into the, uh, the lower 48. Um, drilling down on that, just a few select areas and snow amounts. Again, you might pick up another inch or two across Alta. Um, Snowbird Little and Big Cottonwood Canyons this morning. It didn't quite produce as much snow as I was hoping. Maybe it'll end up different, but that's the way it looks right now. Snow mass an inch coming, so definitely on the lower side. Jackson, maybe another inch this morning, and then one to two coming, 11 1 and 11 2. Your Payet National Forest up there in Idaho you can see the amounts, a few different chances. The biggest chance is right here. 11.5, 11.6, and 11.7. There's Rainier. Big snow on that third surge. Uh, coming there, Fitzsimmons Ridge. You can see the chances. Uh, that third shot is probably the biggest one with three feet. And Mount Hood. A few different chances of snow. And that final one is going to be 30 inches or snow. And that's the biggest one. 11.4, 11.5, uh, 11.6, and 11.7. Um, let me go to... Um, let me go to uh, satellite. And the first thing I want to show you is Hurricane Melissa. Uh, Melissa's a Cat 5. This is as big as they get. This is down in the Caribbean. Um, you can see the very well-defined eye on Melissa. Uh, Category 5, at last check, winds were 160. The track of this is going to roll right over Jamaica and then generally go in that direction. Very slow motion. So high winds and extremely heavy rain in that area, but that is a powerhouse. All right, switching back to the West Coast, um, this is water vapor, so you're looking at, uh, you're looking for moisture in the atmosphere, and that's right here in the whites and the blues. There's your jet stream, and there's your boundary, like I was drawing earlier. So everything's kind of running along that area. Um, there's an area of low pressure up here. Everything's kind of rotating around it. That's the current setup. Your drier air is down here in the oranges. The, the reds, the black colors, that's all drier air. So everything is coming off of the Pacific right now. In fact, straight off of the Pacific. Um, let's look at timing. 
here's the forecast radar. Um, so we'll start this up at lunchtime today, Monday, October 27th. And what do we got uh, at uh, lunchtime? You've got some snow. That's the front working its way down through Colorado. So it looks, it probably looks something like this, the front moving in this direction. Some leftover snow behind it in Wyoming, Montana, and also Idaho. All right, let's move ahead. Here's the dinner hour, roughly. Storm moves away. There's 6 a.m. on Tuesday, pretty quiet behind it. There's the lunch hour. There's the dinner hour on Tuesday. All right, here's Wednesday. So this is Wednesday, probably about 6 o'clock in the morning. There's a next little area of moisture working its way into the Pacific Northwest and British Columbia. There's the lunch hour. There's the dinner hour on Wednesday. Boy, is it quiet across the West. Really just kind of waiting at this point. And there's the, uh, the early morning hours on Thursday. Not a lot happening there. Thursday, October 30th. Looks like mainly high pressure settling in across the West before we bring in the next, next storm system off the Pacific. All right, looking at the pressure anomalies, a few things to point out here. Um, you're, so you're looking at uh, atmospheric pressure anomalies in the middle of the atmosphere. So you're going to spot either lows or highs. Um, and so this is today, and there is our frontal boundary working its way down with an area of low pressure through the northern Rockies. There's Melissa, pointed that out earlier in the Caribbean. All right, now looking ahead, this is uh, Halloween, Friday the 31st. Big high pressure across the, uh, the west, lower than normal pressures out here over the Midwest and uh, probably the Northeast. So we'll have to watch for potential snow chances up there. Uh, Mount Washington and beyond. All right, here's a comparison. So this is effective for Saturday, 10, or that should read, not 12, 8, that should read um, 11, 8. In fact, let me, let me change that because that, that actually kind of bothers me. Um, so that should read 11, uh, 8. So the difference here on 11, 8, pretty stark difference. You've got the operational uh, forecast model over here and that's showing a pretty good dip in the jet in an area of low pressure here but look at the difference so the, and the, this is an AI over here this is the AI version pretty significant difference I mean a much bigger pressure drop a much stronger storm system and a much deeper or digging trough there with the jet stream right there um, you're probably looking at two standard deviations below the norm on that one whereas this one's barely half of a standard deviation so pretty significant that saturday 11 8 it definitely bears watching because that would be if if ai verifies you're talking about colder snowier pattern there for 11 8. i kind of find those those uh con contrasting comparisons pretty interesting now that we have these ai models that we can kind of compare and contrast with here's the jet stream uh ai jet stream for that time frame on 11.8, if that verifies, again, look at the dip in the jet for 11.8. I mean, would support a strong area of low pressure, and the cold air would come in behind it for sure. So something to keep our eyes on. Here's the jet stream. This is the um, integrated vapor transport for the Pacific Northwest. So we're looking for the atmospheric river. There's a little bit of moisture there, 28, 29, but this is more of something to pay attention to, 31, 1, 2, and then another surge right there on 3, 4, 5, and 6. Those would be moderate to strong in intensity. Um, and right at the edge, you can't see it beyond this forecast, but if that AI were to play out, that would be a significant surge of moisture with a strong area of low pressure. Here's what it could look like. There's precipitable water or atmospheric moisture through all the vertical column through 11.6. So there's your start. Teeny tiny little surges early on, but then a big one right there to end. 11.5, 11.6, 11.7, 11.8. And again, that would correspond with what you're seeing here with the integrated vapor transport forecast. You know, once we get into this area, things really start to get quite interesting. Okay, let's look at total precipitation. This is as if everything fell as rain over the next 10 days. And clearly you can see the bullseye is the Pacific Northwest. It's the BC area. In fact, it's even parts of Northern Idaho. You can see some of the brighter uh, colors right there. But the axis for all this is way up here, so it's all falling north of that line, even north of this line in particular, 
as everything sort of tilts up into that area. Again, then you'd have to do a, a, a computation, a ratio to determine snow, but that's as if everything fell as rain. I mean, in some places up here in these reds, that's over three, four inches of liquid. All right, looking at some of the, uh, the snow plumes here, this is Jackson, Wyoming. This uh, generates about eight or nine inches by November 11th. Um, not a ton of snow there for Jackson, but uh, certainly a little bit. Um, here's McCall, Idaho, up there in central Idaho. Uh, this generates five, six, seven inches. Some of the error bars are up around 10, 12 inches. Um, so that's McCall, which sits at about 5,000, maybe 5,100. Uh, final plume here is... Um, Birth of Pass, not a lot happening here for Birth of Pass. Colorado is kind of out of the storm track, except for the front that comes through today. I really don't have much in the forecast for Colorado, unless that AI forecast verifies around 11, 8, 11, 9, 11, 6, 7, 8, 9, somewhere right in there. Um, this doesn't generate a whole lot of snow for Birth of Pass, unfortunately. Here's your five day snow forecast. Um, a lot of what you see here in Oregon, you're going to have to be at very high elevations to get snow. Similar in Washington, the snow levels start actually pretty low, but then they, they start to accelerate up to higher elevations. And notice what you see here on this line is going to happen today, tonight. That's happening with the front. Then the emphasis really shifts up to the north. The biggest accumulations are up here in BC, Interior BC Coastal Range, Alberta. Let me zoom in just a little bit. Again, this is a five-day snow forecast. Here's Wyoming and beyond. So uh, some of this is going to be happening today, uh, but maybe up to six inches in some of these places where you see the purples. Anywhere you see a purple, that's six inches or more. That could be uh, parts of the, uh, the Wasatch. Um, with the leftover front today, you could certainly pick up a couple more inches, but then maybe down the road uh, it's possible as well. And a little bit of snow there for Colorado. It's generally under six inches, but... Uh, uh, let's zoom into Colorado, in fact. Just a little bit of snow, really not much happening south of I-70. It's pretty dry. Um, but with that front that comes through today, that's that's mostly where this snow accumulation is going to come from. And again, maybe up to six inches there, Rocky Mountain National Park, Longs Peak, and beyond. And it is going to be windy as that front comes through Colorado. Uh, in fact, take a look at the time height forecast. This is Cameron Pass, so this is uh, the northern mountains of Colorado. This runs out about three days. You start over here and you read that in this direction into the future. So this green is moisture in the atmosphere. That's coming in with this front. So the, the atmosphere starts to moisten up, <clears throat> and we start to get moisture um, today, especially this afternoon, tonight, um, into tomorrow morning with the front. And it's going to be windy. You can see some of the flags here, these, these wind barbs. Big time wind here over the next 24 hours, probably 50, 60 mile an hour winds up there. And then really dry air moves in tomorrow afternoon and beyond, really dry air. So we've got snow coming into Colorado. And again, maybe up to six inches, Cameron Pass, Rocky Mountain National Park, Longs Peak, very windy as well. Um, and, and after that happens, it's going to turn cold. We'll probably have our first hard freeze in the Denver metro area, Fort Collins, Boulder. These are Wednesday mornings, low temperatures. So the cold air comes in in waves. It'll be certainly cold um, tonight into Tuesday morning, and then even colder as skies clear on Tuesday night into Wednesday morning, looking at all 20s, in fact, mid-20s in many cases. And some of the mountain towns are going to be in the single digits up here. You can see that, in fact, up there around Leadville, uh, Bertha Pass. Uh, a lot of the 13ers and the 14ers are all going to be um, in the single digits. So that's that's yet to come. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. We've got a lot to talk about, which is awesome. Keeps us busy. Take care and have a great day.